And I also want to ask somebody I said, I asked before, how many of you saw TV yesterday? And how many of you saw YouTube yesterday? Another question. Who of you, who of you does not have a profile on Facebook? Who has it? You don't. That's very good. Congratulations, you don't. Who doesn't have a profile on Twitter? Who have who uh, has a profile in Instagram? Who keeps a profile in MySpace? Why are you laughing? What's wrong with that? MySpace has good things. It's good because it ranks very well in in all the navigators. So don't erase your profile from MySpace. You don't have to feed it, keep it updated, but don't erase it because it ranks very well in, uh, in navigators. Who, use Pinst who uses Pinterest? Please raise your hands. Which of you has a blog in Tumblr? And who uses WordPress? Very well. I always begin this conversation saying that today we speak to, to a consumer that does so in many ways. TV, well, commenting on a video, copying, sharing, chatting. It's not as before that people used to read a magazine and that was all, or they watch TV and that was it. No, this is the consumer we are speaking to. It's a completely different paradigm. And it is very, it is also important to begin to say that digital is not different anymore. We all live in a digital world now. It's not uh, an art that is complete, a novelty. We all live there. We all have Facebook. We all share what we do in our social media. So that paradigm of there being a divisive line, let us forget it because that's the reality. Those who were in the panel this morning with Janice, when we spoke about that and we, that's where we're going. Everything will be digital. So we have to forget that uh, device line between digital and physical. It is also important to understand this that I'm saying here is not exclusive to the music industry. It happens in any industry. That's a new voyage the consumer has to take. Nowadays, it's very difficult to sell on, on your first line to be able to sell, to monetize, to convert. You have to have a community. If I don't have it, I have nothing. After having it, I have to catch to that community to begin a conversation with them, to tie to them. And when then when I can convert or monetize that conversation not before. And it's important to see this. We have spoken about this in during the different panels about how important communities are in social media. They're very important. I am of the idea that you have to ma maximize the, the amount of people a community has because of a universe this big, which is my general community, the general number of likes, I pass to a smaller one, which is the ones I tie with. But finally, the ones to convert, to buy, is very small. So that red circle is smaller. You can imagine how small the, the yellow one will be and how really tiny the one will be so it's very important to grow our communities and the other thing we have conversed about is that with the information we have I could I have the tools to keep the right content for the right person at the right time. If I know that my social media are being visited more by women than men, I know that that visit 
occurs more in certain days of the week, and I know that this content works more than another type, I could use that knowledge and only post where, at the moment when it's going to be more effective. It's possible. And to put in perspective, the different services we have seen, each one has a space in that digital voyage. Google is very important. It's, it's the door to any search. You can, you can imagine if when I do my web page, it's called technically the search engine optimization. When I do that, when I do my web page, if I don't do it correctly, it's not going to rank in, into Google. It's very important for, for it to do so because that's where people are going to search for me. When I upload a video in YouTube, it's very important to tag the contents. When I upload that content, if I don't tag it, the search motor is not going to be able to reference it. So it's very common to upload our contents in internet, but we don't ta we don't label them. And so a video contents ha have to have at least 10 tags so that I can make those the contents more visible for those tools called Google. YouTube, of course, is very important because as we have heard, various times in the last days. It's the most important platform to access music in the whole world. How many of you listen to music in YouTube? Everyone does. So you don't have to make it very mysterious if that's the way it is. To continue and link it with a question from the panel uh, a while ago, we have the YouTube Instagram blogs, etc. And for monetization and conversion, we have iTunes. Uh, who of you has this uh, downloaded from iTunes? One album? You have uh, YouTube from our videos. When we saw them in the right way, there was a digital add-on that they monetize, they generate money. How much? We don't know because the formula is not easy. That says a view is equal so much money, but it does begin to generate. So this is the part where we could make money from all that digital journey. I'm sorry, I, I think I'm having technical problems. Now we're going to speak a bit about the mobile theme. There was a slide from Karim this morning about how important the access to internet is from our mobiles. Another question from the public. Who of you has a smartphone? Almost everyone. Very well. Who of you listens to music through the smartphone? And uh, accesses Facebook through the smartphone and Twitter? So things like this. When I'm going to create my website and I don't have in mind that people uh, access it through a mobile, I'm making a mistake so those who work in WordPress make the same different so when you produce a website it has to be ready to be viewed from a mobile phone otherwise we'll be losing a very important access point now talking about the key areas from an artist standpoint Let's say that there are, I have divided this into six different categories. They could be less or more, but it is very important to have a website. A website, as Denise was telling us this morning, I will focus a lot on 
bringing a lot of traffic into this website, but the website should be a central point for your information, so I should be able to capture data there in order to get emails. My information has to be updated there. It has to tell the reader who am I as an artist. It has, it has to have links to all the other social networks. Everything has to be together there, but we shouldn't worry ourselves about bringing traffic into this website because the traffic is in the social networks. What we have next is social networks. I don't have to talk about this a lot because we talked about it the, during the last hour. Uh, in terms of images and video, I think you have to put together a strategy because they are of the utmost importance to generate a video for YouTube at least once a week. I think that's a healthy habit. So if I'm monetizing my networks, I need to have this done. If I only upload a video once a year, chances are that I will not be able to monetize. I will be able to monetize only if I upload 50 videos a year. So monetizing this is very important. Instagram, other social networks are also very important. Instagram, for those of you who don't know, that's part of Facebook. And Facebook, what it did, and fa they created this to integrate it more and more into its system. So this is also used to upload pictures. They try to look at what things could work a little bit better than others in terms of the images and Instagram. CRM, I'm going to talk about this. I love CRM. CRM is all I can do with my emails. A lot of people could say otherwise, but people don't use email anymore. Who of you, the people here present, who didn't read an email today? So all of us, we keep on reading emails, even though we have communication in uh, d through the social networks. I think we still keep on using emails. But when we also talk about selling or monetizing, email is the tool that provides the most success, the highest success rate. So uh, we're going to talk about how important emails are. There was a question from the audience. I think it was Greta Armada who came out with a question. You talked about these caps. They are very important. I think I can spend $10 minimum per day. And with that money on Facebook, for example, I'm going to show this later on. I could grow my community. I could make my content more attractive. Google Apps are also very important. So when people look for something, those apps should be available in a search engine. It is also worth spending some money. It's not a lot of money that you should have to spend on this site. And then we have a, rela a relationship, a direct relationship with the consumer in Colombia. We haven't been able to approach this because we don't have a way to get payment through email but or through internet. But if I have a list of people who are very big fans of my band, I should be able to sell these people directly, my records. Even more so now that we don't have any physical shops, but we have issues related to payment means and the way to get my product to that person. And that's why it's in red here, because in Colombia, that's not feasible still. But any one of these components, they have other data related to, related to them, images, music, video clips. Something that should be ready, not only when I, my record is, not after my record is ready. We should provide information when I'm recording, before the launch, during the launch. And we need to maintain it. We, someone in the previous panel, they said that we only had campaigns that lasted two months and then they died. I think they should be sustained longer. We need to plan properly. I need to be able to know where I'm heading, what my commitment, my commitments are. If I look at this long term, many of these things are not going to make sense. But if I sit down with my work group and my friends and we think about where we want to get with this project, what we want to do, and if we try to make sense of what is going to happen in a few months, during the next few months, I think 
that is going to give us a clear objective, a clear picture of what we want to do. The pillars for our campaign, if we're going to talk about a digital campaign, we need to ha take into account six very important pillars. First of all, the content that's key, everything is based on this. Then the message that I want to convey. The third thing is the strategy that I'm going to use. There are things that work better through Facebook, some others work better through Twitter. We need to be clear about that. What's the scope? What I want to reach? I want to reach a uh, wide target audience or my niche, my fans, or only the people in Bogota because I have a concert there, or Cali because I have a concert there. When am I going to do it? When I'm going to post it? We need to be able to decide when to post. And last, we need to think about having a one-on-one -on -one relationship. I could have a very good conversation, direct conversation with my fans, the fan that went to the show, the fan that didn't have a good experience here in the show, the fan that couldn't go into the show, who couldn't enter the show. I should be able to have that kind of communication with the fans. This slide shows, even though it's a little bit complicated to read the amount of possibilities that we have for our contents. Many things could be generated and the channels that they could be generated from the last column on the right, we have some things that are related to YouTube, social networks, and some other things that are, on, are only related to some social networks. The quality that we need, there are some sites that do not require very high definition video, some of the only required things that could be shot from a cell phone, for example, depending on the use that I want to assign to these networks. This is going to enable me to also determine the amount of money that I need to promote through this means. So we have here 14 different possibilities to generate content to fit those social ne networks. I'm going to read them out loud. Uh, video to upload in, into YouTube, that's something that could be done. We could have all songs from our record on YouTube, for example. If we're saying that YouTube is the most important access point of, for music in the world, why don't we upload music into YouTube? You don't need a video for every one of your songs. Uh, you could only have the cover of your record and a photograph and people are going to be able to listen to your songs and that's going to be something of benefit to you. We could have an acoustic version of a song, a remix of a song to give away photographs from the studio, photographs from the recording of the video from the single of one, uh, one of the singles of the records, the making of the album, a video of the artist saying hello to his, her fans, a live video or a video from a live performance that could be uploaded into YouTube video saying hello to the users of every channel. So if you have a special fan in, on Twitter, you could post a video saying hello to that special fan. And that person is going to be very happy. How much does it cost? Nothing. And how long is that going to take you? Three minutes. Something very simple. So for example, if I have 10 songs, there should be a video of the artist commenting on the song the way it was recorded, how he, he came up with it. There are many, th many ways of generating content. And most of the ways we have here on this slide do not require a big investment. Now let's talk about five elements which are very important to perform this task. First of all, we need to plan it. Of course, then we need to define the objectives, what it is that I want to accomplish, then we need to measure, we need to be, or where the choose of the fans, and I'm going to show you the full content of this slide. So you need to prepare your content, you need to minimize the time, so the Campaigns are launched at the, right at the right time. So if I say that I'm going to launch a video in two weeks, I need to have everything ready, the video, the banners, all the things that I need to promote 
my video in the social networks. In the objectives, part, part of it, we're looking for rich engagement. We're trying to monetize. Those are the three parts of the trip that I talked to you about. We need to define our objectives clearly. The beautiful thing about the social networks is that I can realize very quickly what is working and what is not working. And if things are not working, I can change very quickly my approach. And I'm going to minimize the loss of money. So if I generate a campaign on Facebook and the campaign is not performing properly, I can change the text or the image of the campaign, improve it in real time, actually. So we need to leave or see things from the perspective of the fan. The artist sometimes is very selfish and they want to convey their message and that's it. But we could be a little bit more intelligent. We could get more feedback from the fans. Maybe the fan wants to consume something different and we can change based on that. We can produce adjustments and to finish with, talking about digital media. Digital means doing a whole lot more than I used to do before. So before it was a little bit simpler. And when we had record companies, they used to do a lot of things for us. But today, the little details are very important. The way I sell my content, the way I make it available, the things I do to make sure that people have access to it, where I upload it. I have to be careful about that. These little details are very important in terms of a campaign and its success. Okay, how are we doing in terms of time? And uh, I see some people sleeping on the back. With regards to YouTube, I mentioned this. It's the number one place for online video. This is the preferred site for music search. So that means that our content has to be available on YouTube, no matter what. The importance of tagging. If I only see one tag, I mentioned this before, that is not going to help me a lot. I think that we need to tag our videos properly, at least 10 tags per video. Some suggestions to optimize tagging. Think about keywords. You need to answer the question, what terms are going to be the ones that are going to ha to allow the fans to find my video? So we need the name of the artist, the name of the video, the name of the album, the name of the director, the city where it was recorded, what the video is about, its theme. It is very key to include the artist uh, on the title of the video because the name is the main element of the the main words that the searchers are going to use to search your video. This is very important. If we're talking about a live version of a song, at the end, at the beginning of the, this should be stated at the beginning of the video, is do we have uh, the word video on the title? Live videos have need to have the place and date of the show. That's a suggestion. We need to make sure that we use descriptive words. We need to make sure that all links work and go to the place we want to link to. So I'm going to show you some information here. When I have a YouTube video, on the description part, some people describe what the video is. And it so happens that when I look at this in YouTube, it is only going to show me three or four lines, and the rest of it you have to expand to be able to see whatever it is I wrote after that. A very small suggestion is start with the key band URL. So when the video is shown, if people have more information or want more information, they could go to these links. This is very simply done. Uh, whoever wants more information, they could click on these links or copy this information and go to your web page and get all the information on the band if that's what they want. Let's talk about just a second. Our social networks. I found this a few months back, I saw it on Facebook and I thought it was very relevant and I think this explains what the purpose of all the social networks 
Yes, YouTube, that's what we have here. That's LinkedIn, that's uh, where you have all your commercial contacts, Foursquare, that's related to where in the world you are. Then we have uh, these other elements here and they're linked to different social networks so Facebook of course is maybe the most important social network we have millions of people with profiles on Facebook I think this was already said by someone on the back when I post on Facebook only 15% of my followers see what I posted only 15% and it could be even less so the more people we get on Facebook that number is going to decrease so what's Facebook's business sell advertisement and they want us to pay for our post to be more visible but it works very well Facebook works very well I'm talking about images, it is very important, this is the new news feed. I moved ahead a little bit too quick. Who has run a Facebook ads campaign ever? Is it difficult? Simple. How long did it take you to run it? 20 minutes while well, it's segmented so it's very powerful it's something that could be segmented so I could send that Facebook cat to the people I want so I could segment it so I could make sure that only the people interested get it so if I'm going to have a concert in Bogota I could send it to people in Bogota only and another one that's also very easy to implement and uh, it's worked very well for me in the case of Bomba and Super Litio 2 maybe invest a little bit of money on promoting posts so this post is visible beyond the 15 percent that I just talked to you about so depending on the size of the community that it, depending on the size of it uh, you can find out how much you have to pay to get your post promoted so in that that's a very easy way to find out how much money you need but this post and the promotion of the post the scope of it is quite amazing I recommend this to you highly here in Colombia Facebook is still very efficient as a promotion tool in the States not so much because it's got a lot of people in it in Colombia we still don't have a lot of people using this campaign so this is the moment to do it I recommend it highly I recommend that you investigate that you look into this the advertisement that you have on Facebook is very efficient they have very good tutorials and I think they work very well now let's talk about Twitter some ideas about maximizing Twitter for example play a lot with the avatar the avatar is the image or the profile image change that a lot play with it use the image from the cover of your album follow people key people so Santiago Felipe or Sergio for example they could they should be able to see what the best fans are and retweet some things that they post some people do it your biography should be updated all the time Twitter my Twitter application on my smartphone when you are on an iPhone it has to screens the first screen has your picture and the number of followers and the second one gives you the text that shows you who this person is you need to work on what information needs to be highlighted they are available there we need to define a hashtag do we all know what a hashtag is who, who doesn't who helps me explain what a hashtag is That's the easiest way to find a topic.
That's the way we have to tag a topic so it's visible by other people. Let's say, for example, when on Facebook we could have a link uh, to Twitter and vice versa. So in that way we could have information from both sides existing on uh, the other. We say thank you for following us. Very simple. And another very key point, avoid long tweets because if it, somebody retweets it, uh, it, it becomes shortened. It will be cut. And speaking about, Denise was saying this morning, Social media have gone beyond their childhood and now they're in a new phase, the one of engagement. I don't want to contradict myself with what I showed about the importance of the community, but the engagement is worked apart from the proper contents. When I upload contents into Facebook, what happens with that content? If I have a page, I go into the insights and see how many people went in, how many p shared, how many liked. And I can say my community likes photos more than videos or vice versa, or they like them in such and such a way. And I can begin that tie with my community. Speaking about Google Plus, as you all know, is the social media medium of Google. I like to have it there. Although there is not much traffic nowadays, it's a very important network. Uh, Google is behind. We don't know what's going to find happen finally. We don't, Genius says that uh, we don't know whether Facebook will be there in five years. Google Plus took 24 days to go to the number of users that Facebook took 1,112 days to do and Twitter another 1,015 days. So it's useful to have it there. With it, the hangouts uh, work very well, a hangout. It's like a web stream, a chat, live. It's worthwhile. They work very well. Instagram, very important, of course. Tumblr, as a blog motor. I would say that, that it was, would be the most common one and easier to use if I have a mobile phone and I am traveling, doing a show elsewhere. It's very easy from my mobile to update Tumblr. The application is very good. It's, some artists call their logs, their tour logs, they carry them in Tumblr as a tra strategy. Going into CRM, for those who have seen presentations of mine, I changed the image. But what is CRM all about? It's, called, it's about customer relationship management. What is it about? About achieving a relation that is as functional as the one of that couple in the, the image, giving people the right content at the right time. In CRM, it is uh, emails I worked with. I wanted to show here the importance of emails being the preferred medium for social media for marketing. It, it's very difficult to, conver to convert with Facebook and Twitter and Pinter, Instagram. So have that very much in mind, your email base. That's what people do when they get up in the morning, is check their mails. And we do it before we go to bed again. So for that reason, I think it's a very important tool. As a strategy, what can I do with that? Let us suppose that I focus on 
growing my community in Facebook, I uh, expand in ads to make my web page more visible. I come to have 10,000 fans in Facebook. Then the next step is to try to take from those 10,000 fans in Facebook, take them to my newsletter. How do I do it? I tell them I'm going to give uh, uh, tickets for a show, I'm going to raffle some merchandise or a pic picture from an artist, and only the people who are subscribed in the, to the email database can do it. We have done it with Superlitio, and that has worked very, very well. So it's very simple to do, try to take that uh, community from Facebook to my emails. about how uh, taking profit from those mails. I, I have a platform called MailChimp. I would say that it is one of the most complex platforms. It is not very easy to use. But when I work with it a couple of times, it becomes very simple. And it gives me a lot of tools that are very important to take profit from those emails. Planning, I already mentioned, very important. When am I going to send that email? It shouldn't be sent the day of the event. It should be sent two weeks earlier and then reinforce a week before. So plan your campaign. MailChimp has something called the A-B testing, which means to say that if I have a database of 1,000 emails, MailChimp will let me take a sample of 100 emails and for 50 of those, send a mail with a certain f form, uh, sh shape, uh, how I wrote the subject, uh, the, I, I wrote it directly, and the other 50, for those 100, it sends the other version of the email that has another presentation, a, uh, a subject that is perhaps a little softer with more images within the mail, I don't know. And what the system does is that seeing how these two work, the one that works better will be the one it will use to send the other 900 mails. MailChimp does it automatically. It's not difficult at all. As some strategies in mails minimize the use of images, because when I open an, uh, an email in a mobile phone, those using BlackBerry still, that reading will, will have a very heavy image. So try to use the least number of images so that you can click on them and that they may have a link to a, a web page or to iTunes or wherever you want. And don't use much text in your emails because the fan also will be lazy to read very long mails. So be very concrete. And at the end, depending on how my process is of connection with that fan, of how many mails I am sending, I can improve mine. Because Chimp may allow me to see in which part of the mail the fan clicked, whether it was in the uh, image above or the uh, the link to Facebook or the link to Deezer or Spotify. I can see all that. So that's it. I would like to open uh, the discussion to questions. Do you have any? Please, I am here to answer. I don't know whether we will probably use. This mic. Well, 
I have seen mails. I am subscribed to the mails from Bomba Serio that come through MP3. I like the design. I would like to ask whether they use MailChimp and also whether you use the pro version which is paid and what are the advantages uh, versus the free versions of those mail services and whether an independent bank should invest in, the, in this type of services. Yes, I use MailChimp. I think it's worthwhile. When you don't pay, in the case of MailChimp, you can use it for free, but then you can only send a very limited number of mails. That's the problem. If you go very large, you do have to pay. But it's the fact of being able to measure all that, those mails, the way that MailChimp does it, it justifies the payment. It's worthwhile. 2000 for free. Another question? I wanted to ask about SoundCloud. Is it uh, useful? How, how good is it? I think it's good. It's a way of sharing music through the social media, the most popular way, I think. The problem is you cannot monetize. Whatever you upload to SoundCloud, you cannot get any return from that. You, if you use Deezer, for example, it has a way to create a player that you can share through the social media. And when you upload your contents to Deezer through an add-on, you can earn from that. But SoundCloud as a tool for promotion is, is very good, it's great. It works very, very well on Facebook. And with Group Shark, is there monetization? No. I'm not uh, with Group Shark. What happens? It's a service that uh, the great labels haven't licensed because perhaps it doesn't uh, give the conditions they're looking for. They have just signed a contract with Sony, it seems to me. Sony, but Emmy d uh, sued them. They have that problem. And if you are an independent artist, uh, Groove Shark is not going to monetize you in any way, whether which is something that Deezer, uh, Spotify, and YouTube will do. Only for promotion, exactly. Hello, my name is Isabel. I wanted to ask, now that you know so much about various digital tools for artists, I don't know whether you know any, do you know Top Spin, Revert Fun, which are marketing tools for musicians that reach fans directly. What experiences have you had? What lights could you give on this? We used both very strongly with um, Litio, more so uh, above all, River Nation, they had this platform to send mails, which it was very efficient, but then MailChimp arrived and it, I think, has nothing to do there. Top Spin is very good, but it's more to sell online, uh, to put up my shop and to e-commerce. So you're not going to be able to take the profit from it that you could, but Top Spin has nevertheless some widgets like applications to capture emails uh, in exchange for a download. As Felipe said, you take a song that you're going to give away and Top Spin will do this service. Top Spin will give you an XML file that you paste on your website or Facebook and it will manage that download through uh, the, the email. It, it, you have to pay for it. A year ago it was for free, but they started to charge. It has tools that are valid, but for what you really need, it, you're not going to be able to take the full advantage. My name is Edwin Rios. I do folklore 
music from the Llanos, the plains in the eastern part of Colombia, like carranguera, parrandera music, like... I am here basically because I like to see the other world of what you do because we don't have the scope, the scope in a certain way to capture all this mass of people that fans that follow the, the great ones from Latin America and the world and a phenomenon is presented it's too much work all the time field work we can collect information very quickly from events from our serenades and they're very small I haven't been able to go to the to the great we, we, the folklore pages cannot uh, go over 50,000 60,000 artists um, don't go beyond that uh, the world doesn't know us so I would like to hear something and a, a, a way of being able to take that field to and the people left laziness aside I don't know how to do it but to go to the pages, to Facebook, and, and somehow to arrive strongly. Jenny said this morning something which I thought was very sensible. There will be cases that your reality is that. Those 10,000 views are your reality because that's your market, that's your community. If that's your limit, that's your reality, and it's very sensible, but also, that does not mean that if you do something which is really good, people in another place may not take interest in that. If I am from the Llanos and I have to go to Canada, to Canada to work, and I want to find that music because in Canada I can access Spotify and other tools that I didn't have here but I have there. And if your music is not a label there, you're going to lose the connection with the person there, which we have another acquisitive power then, and it may purchase your music. So it's not difficult to do, really. And if you only have a 10,000 people traffic, then become the best for those 10,000. Look what, what the others are doing which may not be many, that's a very big advantage, and do the best, much better than them, generate more contents. And the other thing is, have you generated contents? Have you done it already, and what happened? Well, within the, the union, it, it becomes very much from the region, proper to the region. I don't know uh, with folklore in Europe or other countries that are not Latin. It, it's well perceived. Well, normally when a person goes to another country, they look and search for the folklore. Maybe they, they watch the rock bands, but they also want to feel what I want to say is that the person there at the small events, the serenade, will not very probably absorb through the through the media, through the social media. I, I don't have an idea how. Look at what the others do, try to improve it, don't stop improving and learn from that response. And if your community is 10, 000, of 10,000, be the best for those 10,000 and also try, of course, to put your music everywhere, upload it in YouTube, Perhaps you don't have it there. Yes, I do. Yes, almost all of my songs. Also my videos, all my things, and I have a contact with artists, a, a bit of all, of everything. Personally, my resonation has been a multiplier of everything I used to do because I didn't really do anything before I was out of context and the first time I came I was even in your meeting that we s spoke about yesterday 
And I took all that and applied it. For me, I very, the, the, the little I do is reflected in sales, but in the minority. But it doesn't go out from there. That, that is my, my urge. But it, it has been useful, and I have applied it 100%, and I take it part by part. I went to every place. I went to WordPress. And I got into all that. And uh, personally, it does work for me. And we see other folklore musicians. And, and what you think, why do they go round and round? Because they didn't have this information. That's a, that's a very good way to put it. Uh, what I'm going to say is very respectfully, maybe what you'd have to do is adjust the contents to make it more universal. Perhaps I do it say this with much respect, what you are doing is very valid. That's my intention, yes, because with so much musician, yes, so many musicians with people that do not have an access to the internet today are going to have it tomorrow, and the resonance begins when we began four years ago. How many of you had s a smartphone? Uh, and, but nowadays you ask the same question and everyone has it. So pe things do change, they evolve. Good afternoon. You spoke about publishing contents at the right time. I don't know, could you give us some strategic tips? For an emerging band that is not very well known so far and that is only trying to break through, so what's the best social network, the best moment to p post information once you have identified a niche? Have you identified your niche? Yes. Uh, based on the music, what's the genre you play? So my friend here, he plays salsa. So we're trying to look at this from that standpoint, salsa, tropical music. Your community, how big is it? They're only trying to get information into these social networks. They're trying to put together the web page. The web page. My recommendation is put together your entire strategy, your website, Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, connect them, link them between each other, invest some money on making yourself visible, for example, on Facebook, so your community is more visible. We did it a couple of years ago with Super Litio, and it works very well. We still do it, and we still generate fans that way. And after you have the, your community, your strategy, start posting content, and after that, you can put together a plan. And you can say, for example, today I'm going to post text, and tomorrow I'm going to post a picture of this and the day after I'm going to post a video of this and look at what works better and uh, Facebook is going to tell you so not only based on the type of content also the time you have to post it so am I going to do better if I post Monday 12 o'clock afternoon or Sunday at, if at the in the evening that's going to take some time that's going to take you about a month to gather information that is going to tell you what works and what doesn't okay so they're telling me right here that we need to wake up right now so we have finished I want to thank you uh, we are going to have a showcase after this right right now so Juan, can we have a panel with Juan Carlos Lozada about music law? So thank you very much, and we'll see you later.